Father, we thank you so much for the day. We thank you so much for the opportunity to gather again to worship in you. Father, we just pray that everything we do today is pleasing to you, that you will be glorified because we are here. We pray all this in your Son's name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Psalm 99 
Thank you. Oh, we got one, one more. One more. See? Time to stand. Oh. <laughs>
that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Our earthly bodies sustained by bread will endure for only so many years. No matter what we do to slow or prevent their end, they inevitably decay. But through Christ, we may find the living bread that came down from heaven. Even those who ate manna in the wilderness eventually died. But he who feeds on this bread, the word of God promises us, will live forever. <coughs>
come to Father, we thank you. We thank you for giving us the abilities to go out and make a living for our families, to buy the things that we want and the things that we need. We ask that you bless this offering that we give back. Help us to use it to spread your name throughout the world. So that's the most precious name we pray. Amen. Hollywood actors. 
And a name sometimes makes you do what the names are, right? And so I was quite the character growing up. Uh, I grew out of it. What do you mean, still all? Uh, but we want to look at names today and, and what they mean. Uh, Tracy is a really good fitting name. Tracy biblically means warm-hearted, trustworthy servant. I like it. You may not agree with it, especially that warm-hearted part, but kind of fits. Um, and each of your names means something different. And you could look those up. I was going to look them up, but I didn't. I couldn't decide this week who to pick on. <laughs> and so, so I, I was going to do Neil, and then Wednesday night he told me what his real name was. I said, forget it. <laughs> and what, what the thing is, is probably a lot of you don't go by your first name or, or, or some other name. Some of you go by a nickname that was given to you. Um, I'm glad my nickname didn't stick to me. Uh, my sister Kathy, when we were growing up, called me Worm. <laughs> I never understood that one. To this day, I don't understand that one, but that was her name for me. Hey, Worm. Okay. Uh, but there's a lot of different things out there on names, and we're going to look at some scriptures. Um, I got this really neat book called His Name Shall Be Called, and they go through all the different names in this book. It's this year's Christmas edition. If you want interested in it, it's down in the bookstore. But um, it goes through things, and here's their verse for the introduction. The verse for the introduction of this book comes from Isaiah. <coughs> Chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah 9, 6. And they have it as, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah, Old Testament, prophecy that one was going to come to rule over the world. We know that that prophecy has been fulfilled, right? Uh, another neat book for you, if you'd, if you'd like, is Don Leach. It says what the Bible says about Jesus. And they go through all his names in there and what he is and his character and everything. Um, excellent little book if you're interested in reading up those things. Just thought I'd share some of it with you. Um, today's main verse that we want to look at comes from Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verses 9 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. It reads as follows. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. God exalted Him on high. And real quick in Luke chapter 1, verse 28 through 31. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at His words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will, be, you will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. So, who named Jesus? God. God named His own Son. You will call Him Jesus. And it's a name above all names, it says. It's the most high name. Now what you have to understand about the name of Jesus is this. It was one of the most common names back in the day. He was not the only person named Jesus. And in the in Spanish culture today, he's not the only one. Jesus is used a lot throughout the Spanish culture for people. And so it's not that the name itself was so special, but it was the name and how he got it and what it meant. This is what the Bible says 
about the name of Jesus and his titles. Yeah, bear with me on this. This is going to be long. You ready? His name is Adam, anointed apostle, author, amen, alpha, the ancient of days. He is the beginning, the begotten, the beloved, the branch, the bread, the bridegroom the bright and morning star, the bishop of our souls, the brightness of His Father's glory. He is the captain, consolation, chief cornerstone, counselor, covenant, chosen of God, Christ. He is daysman, deliverer, dayspring, daystar, door, and desire of all nations. He is elect, the ensign, the everlasting Father, the Emmanuel. He is the finisher of faith, the forerunner, the friend, the first fruit, the faithful witness, the fountain of life, issuing from the cave of death. He is God, the gift of God, the governor, the guide, the glorious Lord. He is the help, the hope, the husband, the horn of salvation, the hearer, the head of the church, the heir of all things, high priest, hell's dread, heaven's wonder, the holy one. He is I am inheritance, image of God's person, immortal, invisible. He is Judah, just, judge, and Jesus. He is the King, the King of Israel, the King of kings, the King of glory, the King of everlasting. He is the life, the light, the love, the lily, the lion, the lamb, the lawgiver, the living stone, the Lord of glory. He is the messenger, the Messiah, the Mediator, Master, Mighty God, Mercy Paradox. He is the Nazarene. He is the offspring of David, the Omega, the only begotten of God, the offering and the offerer. The priest, the Passover, the potent, the prophet, the propitiation, the prince of peace, the prince of life, the physician. He is righteous, rabbi, ransom, rest, root of Jesse, root of David, Refiner, Refuge, Resurrection, the Rose of Sharon blooming in the shades of hell, the Ruler, the Redeemer, the Rock of Ages. He is the Stone, the Shepherd, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Shield, the Servant, the Seed of Woman, the Surety, the Sufferer, the Savior, the Sinless Sacrifice, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Teacher, the Truth, the Tabernacle, Testator, the treasurer of the tree of life. He is the witness, the word, the way, the wisdom of God, the wonderful. In the words of the Bible, he is the fairest among 10,000. He is the altogether lovely one. Of all these names that Jesus has been described of as his character and who he was, Jesus is the name that all knees will bow when he says that, whose knees will bow and bend? Everyone. Those who have gone before, those who are here, those who have yet to come. Those in heaven, those on earth, and those in hell will all bow before him and call him Lord Almighty. What a name. Jesus. And what does it stand for? It's a special name. It's a name given to Him by His Father for Him alone. In those days, thousands were killed by the Roman soldiers. Thousands were hung on crosses as Jesus was. But only one name stands amongst them. Only one name is remembered from all those crucifixions. The name of Jesus. Because it was special. His name was picked by the Father just for Him. Matthew 1.21 tells us it was a hand-picked name by God. It is a name that points back to the Father. The name Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. The precious sweet name reveals the sign of Jesus that many fail to grasp. It was God and salvation wrapped in man. 
take on sin, our sins, so that we might have that salvation that comes. God is love. We've got to grasp that through that name Jesus. Because God loved the world so much, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Can you imagine? Can you imagine sending your son somewhere knowing he was going to die? I mean, it's like saying, uh, Jake, why don't you get in a car and run down to Lawhans and get a gallon of milk? But in the back of my mind, knowing that a horrific wreck was going to happen, they were going to take his life. Do I send them? Do you send yours? Yeah. Jude starts saying, if you have that kind of faith. If you have that kind of faith, you do. If you have that kind of faith, you, you walk the mountain like Abraham. If you have that kind of faith, you build the boat like Noah. If you have that kind of faith, you, you, you go into the lion's den with Daniel. You do those things because of the faith. Knowing that God will supply. It's a special name. This Jesus. It's a name that paints God's portraits. The name Jesus at once reveals the Son's mission and the Father's heart. God isn't in the damning business. He's in the saving business. It's not Him who damns us to hell. It's us that does that job. His business is to save us from that. And in order to do that, He sent His Son, Jesus, for us. He sent His Son, Jesus, for salvation so that we won't be damned to a hell forever and ever. Okay? Some people don't like to hear those words. But it's a true fact. If there is a heaven, there is surely a hell. And this is the test. Sunday, Sunday school. This test here, we're going to pass or we're going to fail. Passing grade is heaven. Failing grade is hell. And you can't look for the person to your left or to your right and say, where, where am I going? You've got to look at that person in the mirror. And you've got to work that out. Jesus came to save you. Are you saved? By the name Jesus, you can be saved. By the acceptance of that. Yes, it's a special name. It's also a stainless name. What do we mean by stainless? How, how many of you have know stainless? What does it mean to be stainless? Without blemish. Stainless. Huh? Stainless. Without blemish. How many of you are stainless? You know, I, I like to, when I was teaching kids, I tell them all the time, I said, I said, just imagine that if you were living life and when, when you were born, they gave you this white suit or this white robe to wear. And every time you sinned, Someone threw a mud ball at you. Sin stains. How many of you are stainless today? I am. Anyone else? How am I stainless? My outfit has been washed in the blood. Scripture says has been made white as snow. Okay? This name, Jesus, is stainless from the viewpoint and fact that in that name there is forgiveness. There's no other name. Muhammad, Buddha, you name them. 
David Koresh, you, you name the name. There's no forgiveness there. Only one name is stainless. Only one name has forgiveness, and that name is Jesus. And because of that name, no matter the sin I did, or have done, or will do, I am stainless. Now, I'm not saying that I can't sin and it doesn't stick to me. Believe me, it does. And because of that sin, there will be discipline paid for it. But I can repent of that sin. I can turn my ways from what I was doing. I can ask for forgiveness, and it's wiped clean. It's gone. If I wrong you, if I uh, do something against you, and I ask you to forgive me, what would your answer be? Marilyn says, okay. Good. Remember what I you know. Good. But if I do it again, what do you do? Spank me. What do you do? If someone wrongs you again, what do you do? You forgive them again, but how many of you, before you forgive them again, recall the first time they did it to you? <laughs> Stainless means pure. Stainless means gone. Forgiveness has this ability with God that if you ask for forgiveness, not only is it cleansed from you, it is gone. As far as the East is from the West, it is forgotten. It no longer exists as if it never happened. Amen. How many of you are so glad that God is stainless? That when you ask for forgiveness, you become stainless as Him and it is gone. I mean, there are so many things that I am so glad He doesn't remember. I mean, there were the early years of Tracy that were not so heartwarming and serving good type things. There were, there were things that make me shiver today. I did that? Or I said that? Or I was part of that? And you have to look back and think, wow. Because the name Jesus has made that big a difference in life that, that we're not who we used to be. We are stainless if we're in Him. It doesn't mean we can just go out and sin. Well, I can sin and do what I want because God's going to forgive me. Paul said, heaven forbid. We have to try to live the life that God wants us to live that He sent His Son here so that we could live. A life more abundant and free. So we're stainless. There's humility that comes with being stainless. There's a humility in having to stand before God the Maker and name your sin and ask for forgiveness. There's humility in having to go to that friend or that person and say, hey, uh, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to call you a turkey last week. You know, or, or whatever it was that we did up front here. You know, and and we, we have to humble ourselves to the point that we're willing to say, I was wrong. And for humans, that's hard. It's hard to say I was wrong or, or forgive me or, or I'm sorry. But it's that kind of humility that's needed in order for forgiveness to happen. There's honor in it. Not only will there be a bowing of knees before Jesus, but the name of Jesus will also be confessed by the lips of every creature. Gang, at that time when Jesus returns, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Now I know that I walked an aisle at one point in my life. I stood before a group of people similar to you. 
And I said those words, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I confessed Him before man. I confessed Him before God. The question is, does my life confess what my lips have said? Does this portray what comes out of here? Or does what comes out of here portray what is being lived here? But on that day, every tongue. We said it, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. He is going to confess that He is Lord. And so you have to look at your life today. Do you confess Him as Lord? Is He Lord of your life? Is He the reason you live and do what you do? Is this His to do with what He wants? Does what came off your lips match what's lived in this body? Because it's only through this that we honor Him. A year or so ago, I, I did a sermon on the temple. This, the temple. And said it's got to be clean. It's got to be a place that God is proud to inhabit. It's got to be a place that... But as so many of us have our temples so junked up and trashed up that it's hard to see where God could live, isn't it? Gang, if we confess them with our lips, we got to live them with our lives. Our speech has got to match our actions. We have to honor Him with our attitude and our ways. We can't just live, however. Yes, He's uh, special. Yes, He's stainless. And yes, His name means Savior. The meaning of the name, by its very definition, the name of Jesus speaks about salvation. Jehovah is salvation. This is an appropriate name for Jesus because His name alone tells us what He was here to do. He was born with one purpose. One goal. Jesus was born to die. Not just any death. Not like all the others on the crosses, but a special death. A death that we remember every Sunday as we gather around this table. It's a, it's a death above and beyond all others. He didn't just die to Himself. He died for us. Word has it that if you were the only living person on this earth, Jesus would have come and died to save you. That's how personal it was for Him. He died for all those before Him, all those that were living then, and all of us who were yet to come. Scripture says His blood is sufficient. What does it mean, His blood is sufficient? Nothing else is needed. Do you understand that? When his blood, when it says the blood is sufficient, nothing else is needed. The only thing we need for salvation is him. That cup, every week when I hold it, it it's not a habit. It's not something I just do. With. That cup, when I hold it, I have to look at it, I have to understand this. It's blood. Shed for me. Personal. Me. Jesus died for my sins. And as I take this, that blood covers me. That blood strengthens me. That blood reminds me of whose I am. That cracker, that, that body broken for me, reminds me. And he was stuck with the spear. He was beat with a whip. He, he carried that cross to that city. He went through everything he went through in this life for me. I love that song, Broken and Poured Out. He was broken and poured out for who? For me. 
because I accept it. Because I understand it. In order for you to say me, you have to accept it. You have to understand it. It's a name that means salvation. Without it, hell. Period. Without this act, without this man dying on the cross, Satan wins. Genesis chapter 3 prophesied that one will come to crush the head of the serpent. And he came. He faced life, he faced death. And in His resurrection, He defeated that death. He sits today at the right hand of the Father. We don't worship a dead Savior. We don't worship a person. We worship a risen Savior who sits at the right hand of God today and is sitting there for us. Church tells us a mediator. What does a mediator do? Try to help settle things out, don't they? They try to do things. He sits there mediating for us. On that day when I stand before God, do I want to stand there alone? Or do I want to stand there with Jesus by my side mediating my cause? And the only way to do that is to understand that name Jesus is to accept that name Jesus, is to live for that name Jesus. I say it in almost every sermon, and, and I can't get it home to you enough. I mean, it, it's Paul's words, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. It's not about me, it's about Him. It's not what do I want to do in this life, but what, what does He want me to do in this life? What difference can I make in this world for Him? What will your epitaph on your gravestone say? That's truly what your name means. I mean, they tell me my name means warm-hearted, trustworthy servant. Will it say that on my tombstone? Will it say, good father, good God? Or will it just say my name because there's nothing else they can put there? Jesus incorporates all those names we read earlier. Jesus is that character, that person that came, lived the same life we live, and did it different than anyone else. He did it sinless. Because of that, He had the ability to die on a cross and take all of our sins. We talk about it in Sunday school. Imagine this. Old Testament, they didn't forgive their sins. They what? Rolled them back. When Jesus died on a cross, He took all those generations of rolled back sins. He took all the sins of the people there that day, and He took all the sins in the future that were to be committed on Him. That's why the day grew dark as night. That's why the earth trembled. That's why Jesus Himself felt the separation from God the Father. God didn't have nothing to do with sin and He turned His back on His Son. Okay, you want to know what it's like to be separated from God? Sin. God can have nothing to do with sin. He has to separate Himself from you at that moment. And until you ask for that forgiveness that comes in the name of Jesus, you're separate. But once you ask for forgiveness in that name, He stands with His arms open wide ready to accept you back in and be in the His. And today, are you His? Do you accept that name, Jesus Christ? Do you accept that person as your Lord and Savior? Do you allow Him to run your life and to live the way He would have you to live? Maybe you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Christ. Maybe today's the time that you look at that and you say, that's what I need. 
that's what's been missing in my life is, is I've never given that to Him and tried some other way. I've tried my way so many times and look where I'm at. Hey, if that's you, then today accept Him as your Lord and Savior to live a different life. Or maybe you're here this morning and, and you've walked in out like me. You, you've accepted Him as your Lord and Savior. And you get so busy in life that you forget some of these things. And we can't get so busy that we forget the one who sent that Jesus to us, for us, for salvation. That only name, that only person that can save us from sin and death, and destruction and death. I mean, we've got to be His, and we've got to be doing His will, His way. Not ours. If we call ourselves Christian, we have to be living. We have to be doing it. See, even the devil believes. It takes more than believing. It takes doing We've sat here long enough hearing about it. That's our time to do, to be, to make a difference in this world. So whether it's the first time in your life that you're accepting, or whether it's having to get back on the path with Him and do it right, today, call on the name of Jesus. Allow Him to change you, make you, mold you, do what He needs to do so that you are His. Saved, sanctified, stainless. That you can make a difference in this world for you. Whatever your decision is, we stand as we say, make your decision. <coughs> Son's name.